you're just finishing up coding some awesome features on your dev environment and you've done all of your testing and everything's working just as you expected. So you go ahead and you hit the enter key there and you send it live to your production website. Now, worst case, your users start to notice or you, you noticed first that something is wrong and your website isn't working as it was working locally. You do a bit of debugging and what you realize is when you were coding up all these features, you added some environment variables and you said to yourself, oh, remember to add that to my production environment. But guess what? You forgot because you were so excited to push those features out. That's exactly what has happened to me here. As you can see, I'm hitting this get happiness button and it's not working. Well, the fix is simple, right? All we need to do is go into our environment variable in and add them back in. So we add them back in. We're going to go ahead and rebuild our project rebuild the project. And then in a minute, we should see that our website starts to work. So clicking that button now, we should see nice doses of happiness there every time we click that button. And even more, if we click the awesome content button, it takes you to someone that you should definitely subscribe to. Now back here, what you'll see is we fixed the problem. So this should be a short video, right? Well, as I said, today's video, I wanna focus on how we can make sure this problem never occurs again when we're developing and how we can add extra features like that type safety to our environment variables as well to check that they are actually a URL and we're pulling through a URL that we want or they're a number, a string, a Boolean, anything you want, you can use Zod validation on all of your environment variables to make sure at build time or runtime, they're working as expected. Let's jump into it. So the library we're going to be using today is T3 EMV from the T3 stack. And as it says here, it's framework agnostic validation for type safe environment variables. So we can use this anywhere you want with your framework agnostic approach. There is specific installation instructions if we're using Next.js or Nuxt here. I'm going to be running through the Next.js instructions, but the agnostic core instructions are where you want to go if you're using anything other than Next.js or Nuxt. The installation is pretty much the exact same, and I'll point out the steps where it's a little bit different here. First thing we want to do is install our dependencies. Now, as I said, with the framework agnostic version, you're going to be installing something called t3-oss slash emv-core instead of this Next.js package. But if you just run through the instructions on their website, which I'll leave linked down below, you can follow along with this tutorial here. So let's go ahead and make sure I've installed these. So what I can do here is I can clear this and then I'll do bun install and then I'll paste in those packages there to make sure that I installed them. So we've installed Zod and the EMV Next.js in our application. Let's go ahead and start using them. So the first thing we want to do is create our schema here. So as it says here, we can create that in source and slash emv.ts. Now the file name here doesn't actually matter, but obviously for our sake, emv.ts does make sense. So I'm going to go ahead and create that file and call it emv.ts. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. Now this is where we now need to define the schema for our environment variables and pull through the environment variables that self in this create emv helper here. So the first thing we have is our server and client. This is if you're running in an environment where your code can be pushed up to the server or the client. So what we have here is for Next.js specifically, let's say we have our server, as I showed you before, we can only use environment variables like this. We can use both of these on the server, but on the client side, we can only use environment variables with this next underscore public prefix. So that's where we'd want to add them to this client bit here. And now what this does in that T3 bit is if we then try and use one of these environment variables, instead of throwing an error and just saying, obviously that environment variable is undefined, it will throw us a really nice error instead to tell us that we've used a server side environment variable on the client. So it's a good way to make sure you're keeping in check with where you're running your environment variables there. So on the server here, let's go ahead and add ours. As I said, we've got that content URL and ours is going to be a Zod string URL. Now this isn't going to be a Zod tutorial, but you'll be able to see the basics here. So what we're doing is we need to make sure that we pull through every Zod validation as a string. So every environment variable is going to come through as a string here. And I'll show you later how you can coerce this into a type of number and different things to make sure that you're checking the correct type. And then we're just going to check that that string is actually a URL. So Zod actually has its own validation to make sure that you're passing through a URL. Let's do the same for that next public API base there. And we're going to want to put that on our client side as that's the next underscore public version. And I'm just going to change this validation here to URL like so. And then the runtime EMV is where we actually need to pull through our runtime environment variables here. Now, what you may notice if you're on framework agnostic is you may be able to just type in process.env or import.meta.env and it will pull them through for you. If you're using something like Next.js 14 or above and you're using client side variables, we actually need to destructure each environment variable here ourselves. 
As it says here, if you're using anything under Next.js 13.4, you'll need to do this manually for everything as well. If you're above Next.js, you'll wanna do it just for the client variables. I'm gonna do it for all of them anyway, as I like to see them all in this file and just have it nice and clear in my mind. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say content URL on this runtime EMV. And that's going to equal process.env. And then again, we're pulling through the environment variable here so that it can add that type checking for it. If you're using something like v, that'll be import.meta.env. Now let's pull through our next public API base as well. So it's going to be the exact same thing and it's just going to look like that. So there we go. We've got everything actually set up already for what we need for adding that type safety to our application for our environment variables. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you before we add build time validation. So this does not have build time validation yet, but I wanna go ahead and show you the error that will occur if we say, let's try and use content URL on the client side now. So what I'll go and do is I'll change my dogs.tsx. Now how we load in these environment variables now changes. So what we need to do is we need to pull through EMV from that file we created as so we're actually exporting a EMV object there. So we export that EMV object and we import it from that file we created. So that EMV.ts file. And we're gonna say, let's say use content URL there. I'm gonna go ahead and change my API. So anywhere where I've used process.emv in my application, I now need to change to use that custom EMV file that we created earlier. So if I load through EMV here as well, and we'll use that content URL. So the only place now in your application you should be pulling through environment variables using process.emv or import.meta.emv is this single file here now, and everywhere else, as I shared, should be using this export here. Let's now go and build our application. So if I now load up a terminal and I do bun run build and bun run start, we should see as I don't have that build time validation that this should now work correctly and it should all build. However, on the client side, we should see an error when this builds because as I said, we are now using that content URL, which is a server side environment variable in Next.js because it doesn't have that prefix. We're using it in a client component. So let's see the nice error that this library gives us. And then let's move on to how we can add that build time validation as well. So now that that's built, if we click this button here, what you'll notice is firstly, it's not actually making any network requests for us. And that's because as you can see in the console, it's thrown an error for us. And it says attempted to access the server side environment variable on the client side there. So we know straight off the bat that we're doing something wrong and we're using a server side environment variable there. So it's added that nice error message, as I said. Now let's go back into our code and just change this to the correct version. And the other really awesome thing, obviously, if we're defining it all on that object is we get the great sort of IntelliSense and autocomplete. So we know all of the environment variables that we've added validation from as they all come off of this object here. So I can now change that to that next public API base. Let's go ahead and add that build time validation. So to do that, if we scroll down here, you'll see the documentation on that. Now this is actually another cool thing to note is at the moment with this, our server validation, so the actual schema is gonna be sent to the client side code. Someone could pick it apart and see the schema that they need for the environment variables. They would not be able to see the environment variables themselves, but they might be able to see that you're requiring content URL to be a, or content URL to be a string with a URL, for example. So if you think that's a secret, which in my case, I, I don't think it's going to be, you can separate this out into different files for each version of the EMV. So as they show you here, they've got that server.ts version, with server environment variables and then the client one there. I'm personally not gonna do that. This is the bit we want here, which is the validate schema on build. So we need to install something else, which is called Jitty. So we're gonna go ahead and install that. So just open up your terminal and install it however you would. So npm install Jitty or pmpm, I'm using bun here. So we're gonna go ahead and install that. And now we can go into our next config.js or .mjs. And we're gonna copy out this code here. So if I copy the top lines of this file here, we don't need this bit as we've already got that config set up. We're gonna paste this above line one in my default bit here. Now, the only thing we need to change now is I just need to change where it's expecting that EMV file path as I didn't create mine at app slash EMV, I created mine at the root level. So what I'll do is I'll just delete this app bit here like so. And that's everything I need for build time validation. So let's check that it's working. So if I changed this, as I said, I require this to be a URL. Let's say I change this to one, two, three, four, something that isn't a valid URL. Let's see what happens if I try and build my application now. So if I'm just gonna clear this, and then I'm gonna run that bun run build there. 
And there you go, almost immediately we see it throws up an error that says invalid environment variables, next public API base, invalid URL, because Zod there was expecting a URL and we gave it something that wasn't. This again would happen if we made this undefined or it wasn't there, it would throw an error. So if I go ahead and let's just delete this entire environment variable, we'll see the error that occurs for that. Let's open up our terminal and run bun again. And as you'll see there, it says that it's required there. So it, it can't find that environment variable. So it's thrown an error immediately on build time there. So it's a very helpful check as your production build would immediately fail if you're missing one of these environment variables. Now, the other thing to note is that all environment variables, as I said, are pulled through as a string here. So we've got one, two, three, four here, which might be a number. So we might be expecting a number. So if we went into our env.ts, or if let's say firstly, if we change this to even just not include the quotes, so you'd expect this here to be a number of one, two, three, four. If we now go ahead and change our next public base API schema here to instead of Z slash string, if we said number, this should error out as this isn't actually how this library necessarily works or environment variables work themselves. So if I go ahead and run a build on this, what you should see is the expected number but receive string. So everything's coming through as a string. Now, nicely, that documentation does include some recipes to help you with this. So you've got that Booleans example or this numbers version. So what we actually need to do is coerce the string firstly into a number. And we can do that by saying z.string like so. And then we can say dot transform. And then on the transform, we can say pass int. And then we'll just pass that as an integer. And then we'll pipe all of that into the z.number validation. So z.number like so. And now that we've got that, if we now run our application, we should see that it should run as it's now validating that correctly as a number for us. And anywhere we use that in our code now, that will be a number as well. So there we go. It's actually got past that build step and it's run it. And I'll show you if we now change this to a string instead of a number. So if I went like that. If I change this now, we should see that it will show us another validation error. So as I said, it's just really cool. We can add all of the Zod library validations to our environment variables there. And it's a super handy way to get this done. If I change all of this back now to our dog endpoint, and I'll change this z.string back to the URL, that is pretty much all this tutorial needs to cover. It's a super simple setup, but it just saves you a headache in the future. And as I said, it even adds that nice feature of getting that sort of validation and that type checking, and even that autocomplete when you're typing your environment variables so that you know you've added them and you know you've added some validation to them at least as well. Highly recommend you go and check out the documentation here and read it. As I said, if you're using that framework agnostic version, let me know if you've ever run into issues with not adding your environment variables to your production environment before. And if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments. And as always, please subscribe and thank you for watching.